Sales Wolves. Ow. Ow. <laughs> All right, on our Sales Wolves podcast, we got twofold tasks. First task, we love the salesperson. And uh, if you're in sales out there, customer service, actually, if you're in any career whatsoever and you interact with people in any capacity whatsoever, you're in sales. at work or at home, you're in sales. Okay? So we love you. And we appreciate you, and we want you to get better, because as we all get better, the world gets better. The world gets better, right? Our was, goal is world peace. Our go- <laughs> world peace. <laughs> I thought it was domination. Uh, well, that would create peace for us. <laughs> it would create a peace. It would create a piece of the pie. <laughs> Very rather large piece of the pie. Depends on how you spell peace, I guess. Right. Depends on. Yeah, you're right. And then always provide tactical training you can take to the bank. You can use it today. You can use it with your spouse. You can use it at work. You can use it with your kids. You can use it, you know, with whomever you interact with. But uh, we we have a strong focus on sales. So Tyler, you want to talk about our, our podcast today? Yeah. So today's podcast is titled Face to Face. And really just the world that we live in, speed is everything. And, and as as the world gets more high tech and people start moving more into the technology space, there becomes less and less face-to-face interaction, less True. and less personal interaction. And we just think that that's a bad trend. And we think that, that there's a lot of reasons that we'll go through today on why face-to-face is so important and why personal interaction is so important. And uh, we're going to go through a lot of that uh, today and give you some actual tips on how you can still maintain face-to-face interaction uh, but be efficient with it because it's not as it's not as efficient, but it is way more effective. Way more. Uh, so how can you kind of balance balance those two? So you know, we'll start with just the the simple fact of what's going on in the world today. So there's millions and millions of dollars spent on every kind of print advertising, social media marketing, yep. um, every different aspect of of marketing that's not being spent on the face to face time allocation that's not being spent on the face-to-face and really it's just the way the world's going and I think you probably wanted to discuss a little bit on how a lot of that has to do with the millennial uh, generation Um, but that the reality of what that generation really um, is passionate about and and, and really gets behind is a little bit different than what people would probably think yeah a lot of people I have a lot of I have a lot of friends in you and I both we have a lot of friends in business that um, that really shun that millennial generation because they feel like uh, maybe they're more lazy, maybe they are, uh, maybe they're they don't focus at work, they they don't care about anything. Sure. And here's the thing: if if you have somebody that's working for you and they don't care, um, it's just because they don't care about what you're doing. Mm-hmm. It doesn't mean that that generation doesn't care, mm-hmm. um, and that that generation won't work hard at something. I mean, my gosh, do you know how many of them? slept on Wall Street for hmm. so long and and w- agree or disagree with why they were there, it's sure. irrelevant. But I can guarantee you this, there's no question as to whether they were committed about mm-hmm. being there, right? Mm-hmm. The 99%. Yeah. Um, they were committed, right? Sure. And they stayed there, they, they I mean, in not great situation, right? And, and slept on the street. And so I, I've begun to look at that generation, that millennial generation, of which you are a part of, mm-hmm. um, as my favorite generation. Uh, they are the next service generation, believe it or not. And you know the last service generation was what? I don't know. The greatest generation on this earth. It was that World War One, World War Two generation, mm-hmm. the generation that built this country. Yeah. Um, and, uh, and that was the last service generation. And for me to say that the millennials are the next service generation, this would, this would flip most people. They would not agree with me. But I am so excited about them because they're cause-oriented. 
they care about. If you tap into what they care about, you will get the greatest amount of work out of them. So, well, and, that's and, it's, a, and it's just, it is what it is, right? So, I mean, it's, mm -hmm. it's the generation that's, that's there now. Mm -hmm. And so it's all about how you perceive it. And it's just the law of attraction. If you keep telling people that these, these millennials, that they'll never work, that they'll never do this, they'll never do this, then the ones that you're leading will never do that. Right. It's just like, in the, in it's those questions where when people talk about it and we're like, you're right. Because yeah. if you think that, then yeah. that's, that's how it's oh, going to yeah. be. Yep. And so it's just changing your mentality on how you think and, and changing the way that you communicate big time. That's right. Changing the way you communicate with them and what you communicate about and how you set goals and how you set um, every aspect of your organization. And then you can get them. When you get them steered in the right direction behind the right purpose, they're powerful. Powerful. Yeah. Big time. Yeah. And so this face-to-face -face is powerful. Um, and, and most people would say, well, they're not a face-to-face -face generation because they're always on their phone. Mm -hmm. No, no, no. They are. Mm -hmm. Pay attention. To them. Mm -hmm. Show them why that's important. They love face-to-face -face interaction. Yeah. But you got to teach. You got to teach that because they have been buried in technology their whole life. That's true. I mean, they're the first generation raised on completely. It's complete technology. And they're, they're very collaborative. I think that's a big thing. They're big. Great. Point. They're big on 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 working in teams and, and things like that. So when it comes to the actual, re the reality is that it's it is what it is, and and it's on how you react to what we have and it's it's who we have and so it's now it's getting the most out of them. And so face to face is the best way to do that. Beautiful. Um, one of the notes that I put down on here, people do business with people, not entities. Uh, and, and I think a lot of that has to do with the fact that the quote that we quote a million times is people don't know how much you care or people don't know, care what you know until they know how much you care. Right. Um, who was it that said that? Is it Brian Tracy? I think it was me. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> Pretty sure. See how hard he laughed. <laughs> I'm pretty sure it was Brad Tracy. I think it was. Maybe it's someone else. Honestly, could have been Zig Ziglar though. It was yeah. one of the it was one of the greats yeah. that said that. One of them. But people don't care how much you know until they know how much you care. And so much of that is 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 embodied in that personal uh, t being able to read body language. Sure. Uh, a statistic I found that said 93% of communication effectiveness is determined by nonverbal cues. Right. So if you're not face to face, if you're not knee to knee. It, there's so much, there's so many elements of communication that's just completely off the table. Missing. Um, yeah, most of, I mean, 93% of communication effectiveness is determined by nonverbal cues. Yeah. So how can you see a nonverbal cue if you're not face to face? Mm -hmm. How can you really communicate somebody unless you're knee to knee, eye to eye across a table or a coffee shop or whatever, whatever. whatever and it's, and it's the, it's the little things, but it's the crucial things that are missed, the crucial elements of communication that are missed in those situations, because you could be one facial expression away uh, from somebody completely taking something in a different context than the way you meant it. Um, there's so many times that that happens through text. You know, you oh my text gosh. And, and you send one and it's just, she's like a spouse. Like you send a text to your spouse and she's like, oh my gosh, why are you in such a bad mood? I'm like, whoa, whoa I, I didn't mean it like that. Like, yeah, I, I'm not in a bad mood. I'm in a great mood. Yeah, like with punctuation. Well, yeah, well, you're sleeping on the couch tonight. <laughs> yeah. Punctuation becomes very, very important. Very important. <laughs> An exclamation point. Did you or, eat, uh, comma, grandma, or <laughs> did you eat did grandma? You? Oh, no. <laughs> no. <laughs> there was one with a horse and a guy named Jack. I can't remember. But, oh, um, <laughs> so, <laughs> so when it comes to being face to face if we know it's the most effective mm -hmm. then it becomes to how can we make it the most efficient to utilize it right because it's great to say face to face is the most effective but then it's another thing to actually put it into action right um, so we've got some tips here on, on how to put it into action and how before to be you, efficient about it yeah before you start those tips i wanted to say something about actually getting to the face to face mm -hmm. um because everybody wants to send an email, social media, they want to reach out through some form of technology to set the meeting up, mm -hmm. phone call even, and nobody wants to walk through the door anymore. Mm. Sometimes, I venture to say, well, let me just give you, give you some, so, so in the 90s, I'm in an office, I would have had probably 10 times or 20 times the amount of people walk through the door to try to get a meeting with mm -hmm. me. In the 2000s, it was dra I bet it wasn't 20% of that. Sure. And now it's probably 20% of that. Yeah. 
I've never had anybody walk in the, this office the and no try to get a meeting. The no soliciting sign business has really gone downhill. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you <laughs> no, don't even need it need, now. <laughs> you don't even need the no soliciting sign anymore. You don't even need them up. They're all rusted and corroded and nobody, re I mean, because uh -huh. nobody walks through the door. But I found that if you will walk through the door, if you'll bring that old school back, mixed with the technology, I'm all about technology, all about utilizing it. But that old school walk through the door and do it 25, 50 times a day, Man, you can. Yeah, it's unbelievable. Just on the just on the simple, just in the simple fact of it's so much harder to reject somebody in person than it is over the phone. So it's so much easy harder. to just hang up or say not interested or say, hey, uh, now's not a good time. But when you're in front of them, <laughs> it becomes mm. very uncomfortable. Very, very uncomfortable for someone to reject you in person. And so that that in and of itself increases your effectiveness sure. yeah. just by being there. Uh, and all growth takes place in the. Uncomfortable, uncomfortable, because it's uncomfortable for you. Yeah. And I can remember, and I've told stories about back when I was a financial advisor and knocking on doors. I can mm -hmm. remember going into neighborhoods where on the the neighborhood sign, it, huge letters, no soliciting or no mm -hmm. no solicitation. And I can remember just incorporating in that that into the first line when I would knock on someone's door, <laughs> and uh, and I would say, man, I saw that no solicitation. Have you guys been getting a lot of soliciting? God, I cannot stand that. I'm Tyler Harris. I just wanted to come out and introduce myself. I work at the Edward Jones office right down the road. <laughs> like, and like, I was just like hit it on the front end. Like, don't you hate when people solicit you? Yeah, I'm yeah. just out here trying to get to know our neighbors. Yeah. And they would just use that like against them. Sir, did you see the no soliciting sign? I'm like, I hate that. Like, is that not so <laughs> annoying when people come in, they try to solicit? <laughs> you know what I used to do? You know what I used to do? It's so funny you used to do that. We've never talked about this. I would walk through the door when I was selling payroll. I would walk through the door of these offices and you know you get the gatekeeper right mm -hmm. there at the desk and, and and they're like and they're never nice about stuff. And I'm like, hey, I, I saw your no solicit no solicitation <laughs> sign out there. I just absolutely ignored it. I'm here to solicit. <laughs> <laughs> and 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 literally that most of the time they would go, That's funny. <laughs> you know? And they would laugh or something. And I would go, Hey, all I want to do is get a meeting set up with you know, and boom. And and and, the, and you know, a lot of that is just it was embracing the uncomfortable. Yeah, it's uncomfortable to do that. And what I would do too, which I, I know this is old school as crap, I would take an apple pie in. <laughs> Who takes an apple pie in anywhere? I would just walk in with That's an apple pie. That's the nugget from today. <laughs> if you want to succeed in sales, apple pie. Apple pie. I'd walk through the door with an apple pie and be like, "Hey, I gotta, I gotta." You do can't it. reject a guy with a you apple can't. pie. <laughs> That. It's not even wrapped. It's like from grandma. <laughs> yeah, that's what I mean. It looked like. I had a bunch of my. <laughs> so I would go in and be like, I've, I've got to deliver this to so and so, and they would look at me. And I'm like, it's an apple pie. And, and literally, they would have to go get so and so and come out so I could deliver the apple pie. I would get the meeting 100% of the time. That's awesome. Anyway, let's face the face. Let's there go. may be a huge, huge swing in apple pie sales. <laughs> in and the those solicitation signs. <laughs> Do not solicit signs are going to go up as well. <laughs> it says doesn't matter if you have an apple pie. It doesn't matter. If you have an okay. <laughs> so I can remember one time literally knocking on someone's door, and they opened up the door and they said not interested. And I, I remember just at some point when you're when you're going door to door like that, you just have to make it all a game. It's you a game. To, you have to make it a game, and it almost it's almost like the more uncomfortable, the 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 more fun. Oh yeah. And and I can remember in that situation. Being I like, made dating that way. <laughs> <laughs> That's interesting. <laughs> anyway, now break your train of thought. Just took me to a weird place. Um, but I can remember, not interested. And I can remember sitting there being like, not interested in what? Meeting me? And like taking like personal offense to it. And he said, no, I'm not interested in buying anything. And I'm like, That's perfect because I'm not interested in selling anything at all. And then we just like go right into the conversation. Yep. Uh, and then some people, they just would not know how to handle that. And just say, literally, I. I don't, I don't even have any interest in telling you what I do, who I work for, what I'm, nothing. I'm just literally out meeting people, doing some good old fashioned advertising and, and meeting our neighbors. And then all of a sudden they would open up, then I'd stop back by, then I'd stop back by. And then next, you're building relationships. Mm -hmm. The only way you can do that is face to face. That's, That's it. That's the only way. So when we go into the actual tips on, on how to do that in the most efficient way, number one is being prepared on the front end. Yep. It's. It needs, everything you do needs to be very scripted, but not sound scripted at all. But you need to know everything that's going to come out of your mouth yeah. in that situation and the things that they're going to say and how you're going to, 
how you're going to um, answer those objections and all that stuff. You need to practice, practice, practice. With our organization, we have a, a huge culture of practice. Huge. And uh, we are constantly making sure every single person is saying the exact same things, the exact same ways, because we don't want them to ever get into a situation where something comes up and they didn't know how to handle it because we know exactly what they're going to say. We know exactly what that other person's going to, how they're going to respond, the main things they're going to object There's with. really only so many responses. No. I mean, yeah. it's not, it's not rocket science. Yeah, absolutely. So all that preparation has to be done uh, on the front side and then setting expectations with your meeting. So the ones that aren't just walking in with an apple pie, right. <laughs> <laughs> the ones that are set meetings or set appointments, uh, presentations, whatever that, that sales process may look like is setting that expectation of, Hey, I'm going to be there on Thursday and this is going to be a 20 minute meeting or a 15 minute meeting or a 10 minute meeting, whatever it is, setting them up front, uh, setting that up front and then sticking to it, which is yep. super important. And that's something that within our, our organization, we, it is critical that we tell them, Hey, this is going to be a 10 minute meeting in 10 minutes. I'm going to be in and out of there. And for us to build that trust with that person that when you said it was going to be 10 minutes, that it was 10 minutes. Yep. Because why would they believe that your product is going to do what you say it's going to do if you told them you're going to be in there for 15 minutes and you spent 35? Yep. It's just a credibility issue and it's a trust issue and it's building that relationship. Uh, so setting those expectations of what you're going to go over. And, and literally, just like I interrupted you, mm -hmm. I've done that in meetings and gone, I told you it would be 10 minutes mm -hmm. and it's at the 10 minute mark yep. and I'm getting up. And going, I don't want to, I'm, I'm not going to take any more time than I told you. Mm -hmm. And if they're like, whoa, 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 I just got a question. You know, I just want to finish this. That's okay. But do what you said you were going to do. And, and that leads perfect into the next, one of the next points, which is set up your schedule of meetings in that day geographically. Sure. And, and set it up um, on the calendar so that you have to get out of there in those amount of times. Yep. Because there's nothing more powerful than saying, sir, I, I said I would be 10 minutes and, and I've actually got to get to so-and-so business down the road. And they know so-and-so business because if you're talking to them, you're, they're probably in the same industry or, yeah. or same, uh, same field. They're probably in the same market. And so to be able to say that, and you have to get out of there. There is no lingering on and, and, and what is it, the verbal diarrhea. Of the yeah. Yeah, or whatever yeah. you call it, just over. So what what do you you always say? You say it all the time. You're, you're um, that's what do you say? Like sell it? Like well, you've already sold it, but like then you convince them. You're like convince them not to buy afterwards. Oh you just yeah, keep talking. I forget what I said. I can't remember how the way you phrase it. Uh, but you 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 set it up on the front end. Talk to them into it and out of it. <laughs> yeah. So you set it up on the front end so that you've got to be in this meeting at this time and this one at this time. You know how long it's going to take you to get there. So you have to be walking out of there by this time and yep. to, by setting it up that way and that's why we when we're doing our meetings you know we say you know seven to eight meetings a day yep. face to face because in order to do that you're going to have to get in get boom, out and boom, get to the boom, next one boom. and there's no better feeling than that momentum of rolling from one meeting to another and it creates a sense of urgency mm -hmm. not only in you but also in your prospect mm -hmm. also in the person that you're selling it also and this is a little bit off topic, but it also, it, it controls so much of the emotions within yourself. When you've got eight meetings set in a day versus you've got two, if you go to those two, they are going to be able to feel how much you need to close both oh, of those yeah. at the very least one of them you yeah. have, and you're going to stay longer and you're going to say more. You're going to say too much and you're going to try to oversell and they're going to be able to feel that nobody that wants the desperate one yeah actually absolutely but when you've got eight you're just going to know that hey three or four of them are going to buy on the spot another two or three are going to probably take a couple of weeks to follow up and then they're ultimately going to buy and one or two of them is just not going to buy yeah and that's fine yep. you're just running those numbers and making that happen that's it we're your host joseph caldwell tyler harris and we are the original sales wolves uh -oh. Uh -oh. That sounds, that sounds weird. <laughs>